Hello and welcome to this playthrough of Faxanity. This is one of my very favorite games, and it's for the NES. And I probably play this game about once a year or so, but along the way my skills get a little bit rusty. So we'll see how it goes anyways, but we're going to start out right from the very beginning of the game here. So you can see here we've got our nameless hero walking back towards the world tree, which is leafless and lifeless, as it would seem. I've been on a long journey. I came back to my hometown to find it is almost deserted. The gate is closed, people are gone, and the walls are crumbling. I wonder what happened. Well, let's go find out. This is the elf town of Eolus. It is located at the bottom of the world tree. And the elves live here. Go to see the guru before you see the king. Okay. So this is the guru. You can tell by the church-like atmosphere that this is some sort of spiritual, religious, perhaps, figure that is helpful throughout the game. And we'll talk to them now. If you are going to see the king, take this ring. This ring will identify you. Don't lose it. And now we've obtained the Ring of Elf. The gurus in this game are super important. They have several functions. The first is the last guru that you spoke with is where you return to if you die. So, for example, if I went along my merry way and got roasted, I would return to this town and that's where I would recommence my journey. The other thing that a guru does is give you a mantra, which is a password that you can use. And that password allows you to quit, obviously, and come back to whatever area of the game that you were in with your rank that you had last, as well as a baseline amount of money at the start of that rank as well. So that's important. The king is waiting for you. Okay then. Hello. Glad you could come. Disaster has befallen us. The elf fountain water, our life source, has stopped. The wells are drying up. Many men went out and nobody came back. You are our last hope. I shall give you 1500 golds. Prepare for your journey with this money. It will be a dangerous journey. Take care of yourself. Okay, so we've got 1500 golds. It's pretty well known, I think, by this point, that if you spend out all of your money in its entirety and then go back to see the king, what you end up getting is an additional 1,500 golds that you can, <laughs> crap, that you can uh, use as well. Okay, so we almost got roasted there. That was pretty bad. So Smoking Man here, if we talk to him, he'll say, do you have a weapon for fighting? We don't yet, so that's where we're headed to next. So this is the tool shop. You can see it's the weapons guy. He's got shields and stuff on the back wall. So he sells some tools we want to buy. And we're going to buy the hand dagger. And we're also going to buy some magic as well. And that's going to be in the form of the deluge for 400 golds. Everybody in this game is really polite. It's kind of nice. Okay, so if you don't equip your stuff, you're not using it, right? So we've got to go into our menu here, equip our dagger. So now our guy's holding his little knife here. And we also have to equip our magic as well. Okay, so now... The next step is to go and buy some keys. So we'll get two jack keys. Very good. Now if we go see I think over here is the food man? No, that's just the bar. I think this is the food guy. We'll go see him too. 
The food guy is a good bet. He'll give you dried meats to bring energy for 50 gold, which is pretty cheap. And if you eat his food three times, you will have a full life in magic meter. And that's just up in the left-hand corner. You can see that that's increasing as I'm paying this man for his dried meats. Wonderful. So we're full magic, full power, and we can go visit some other people to get a little bit of the backstory here. Don't try too hard. Thanks so much, lady. This person here says, A meteorite fell into the world tree and created havoc. At the end of the confusion, the dwarves of the underworld came up and attacked the elves. Nobody knows the reason. So I guess, based on every mythical conflict ever, there's always elves and dwarves at odds, so maybe that makes a little bit of sense. I'm just very curious for a moment to just see how much a red potion costs. Hundred and sixty, eh? Hmm. It might be worth our time to pick one of those up. Okay. That way, if we are running really low on energy, we have the ability to replenish it in its in its completeness. So that's always good to have, especially at this beginning phase of the game where things can be a little bit harder, of course. So it's a good thing that we've equipped our dagger here, because this is our first enemy that we'll actually be able to kill in the game. And enemies will drop money, bread, or nothing, usually. Okay, so this door that we're about to try to go through is locked, so we need to equip that jack key. And we've used the key, and off we go. We're now outside of our town, headed out on an adventure. So, this game does require a little bit of grinding, and not for experience so much, but rather for money. There are tons of expensive things in this game that you'll need, like absolutely 100%. So it's really good to take the time to actually fight some enemies and kill them. Okay, this guy making me eat my words right now. As much as I want to kill that guy, the little spiky guys are a pain in the butt at this stage in the game. You can only kill them with magic because your weapon is too short. When you hit, it's not low enough, so you can only use magic. And magic is an expensive commodity in this game in its entirety, right? So you want to make sure that you're not just using magic willy-nilly if you can help it. These little zombie dudes don't give you very much in the way of money at all. Actually, they don't give you any money at all. But they're pretty good for experience. I think our first rank increase that we get will be at a thousand points. So it's probably a good idea to do that. I'm just gonna kill these guys a couple more times because the next town that we go to, we're gonna have the ability to buy a couple of things. And, yeah, you, you just really need to spend some time, once in a while, more often than not, making some money, so that you don't get your ass handed to you, because you're not equipped properly, right? It's, it's a common problem. And then up in this building here, I didn't show you while I was up here, but I will now. This is a shop with some dream items that are way too expensive for the beginning of the game. And this guy is selling the most wonderful things, like the magic shield, which is a huge shield upgrade. Soon we're going to buy the small shield, but the magic shield deflects uh, magic attacks as well as physical attacks. But for 7600 gold, we'd be here an awfully long time. And then the death spell here, fantastic. It's essentially one of the second, I think it's the second strongest spell in the game, maybe? But good lord, for 12,500 12, gold? We'd be here an awfully long time fighting those skull heads. So we'll forego that for now. You can get death and the magic shield later in the game as well. 
It's not that because we're not getting it now, we're not gonna get it. We just won't get it at the time, for the time being. Okay. So let's go see Toolman here. This is the town of Appaloon, by the way. So we definitely want the small shield. So we'll pick that up. And again, we can't equip anything indoors, so we'll just head out here. Small shield is equipped. Good luck. Thank you. And the key guy, I think he still just sells jack keys. Um, we haven't used any yet, so that's good news. If you have the matok, you can break the wall, but if you don't have habit, ellipsis, hmm, maybe you can't break the wall? Pretty good indication. The matok should be in the tower. You can get it by defeating a dwarf. Okay. That's a pretty daunting task ahead of us. There is the town of Fourpaw ahead of you. Cool. So we'll go see the guru. You need peace of mind. I will meditate with you. So this here is the password that the guru has given to me. And if I were to die right now, I would return to this specific location. And I would have, well, I'm not quite at the next rank yet. Because the guru didn't give me a new rank when I spoke to him. But if I had a new rank, I would start at that rank. And I would get a certain amount of money that's associated with that rank to start out again. So... But we haven't fought enough baddies yet, and we still have a pretty good amount of health for the time being, so we won't go to the healing clinic here, um, but we will actually we'll go in just to talk to the little dude here. Watch out for the jar of poison. The poison will take your energy away, right? Typical. This guy's like a mob boss. He, he looks so Italian to me, I don't know why. Do you want a treatment? 250 golds. I don't really want his treatment. His treatment will restore your magic and your power to full. You can carry eight items. They are all important. Choose well. Did you learn the Guru's mantra? The mantra will return you to this world. Hold on to the mantra. You think that they could have, like, fixed that up a little bit better grammatically, eh? Just a little bit? Okay. I look so forward to the next town where you can get the next upgrade, the new weapon upgrade. You get the longsword there, and it just makes fighting so much easier. These guys die in one less hit, and it's just good. It's a good time. Okay. So the next place that we're off to is this tower. So we need a jack key to get in here. So off we go. So we have to go find the dwarf and get the matok so that we can break through a wall. And the wall is literally like a crumbling wall that can be that can be destroyed quite easily with the tool. It's essentially a giant pickaxe, which you'll see. But to defeat the dwarf, we need magic. So I'm going to try not to use too much more magic. I'd like to kill the dwarf twice. And in doing that, that'll give me enough energy, or sorry, enough money to be able to afford some of the upgrades that are coming up. These guys are just nuts. They're pretty good though, like they just kind of jump over you when you approach them. So that's super helpful. If I come back from this direction, you'll see, you will jump over me and then I can just corner him over here. And I can farm him for money. Just like this, eh? Like if I do this a few times. We're gonna do this on the way back out to make some money. Because we'll need quite a bit. For the time being though, I'm gonna stop doing that. We'll concentrate on the task at hand first, which is going to kill that dwarf. Yeah, when you have the long sword, your sword's long enough that you can just poke those guys and then they die in one hit. So 
Some of the jumping's a little tough in this game too, just because it's almost like you need a head start to be able to get anywhere. And those guys are called frogmen, by the way. Named so because they like to jump, maybe? I don't know. Okay, here's a dwarf. Looks horrifying, right? Scary music, all that good stuff. He will kick our ass, so we're just gonna bombard him with magic. He takes 13 hits to kill. It's 9, 10. And I'm just gonna wait for him to fly away from the wall so that when we hit him, the coins don't disappear. Okay, so I'm holding Matok. I've picked up that item. Wonderful news. Good stuff. So I'm just gonna leave and come back here. And I'm gonna kill him again. Because, like I said, it's... He's a really great source of income. I just want him to fly a little closer to me. There we go. I think they give about 700 bucks or so. We have a little bit of magic left, but not enough to kill him for a third time, so... We'll just count our blessings that we didn't die a horrible death trying to kill him. That was pretty good, actually. They're like the one enemy in this game. There's one other enemy, too, that I really hate fighting. That we'll fight later on. But, yeah. Gosh, I wish I had the longsword. Please don't kill me, Frogman. I just want your money. Just give me your money. Thank you. Okay. This guy's always in our way. Cool. So we'll just kill this guy a few times. Um, occasionally in this playthrough I'm going to have to do a little bit of grinding for cash, as I mentioned. If you have no cash, you're essentially screwed. And the next couple of purchases that we make are quite expensive. We need some wing boots. And we also need um, to buy the long sword, as well as an armor upgrade. And all of that costs us probably about 8,000 gold. Alright, so this should be the last guy that we need to kill to get 8,000 gold. Awesome news. So now we can head back out. Anything that we get now is just icing on the cake, as far as I'm concerned. Now hopefully we don't die. Could you imagine? Now I'm just going to kill this guy to get a little bit of extra bread on the way out of here, just in case. Stranger things have happened, so better to be safe than sorry, of course. There we go. Cool. And we can kill this guy too, take his delicious bread meats. Awesome. So this is the wall that we need the Matok to break through. So we'll go down, we'll equip our Matok, and we'll utilize that. So there goes that wall. Now, really big mistake you can make is if you accidentally go back to the left, that wall will actually respawn. So have fun going back into the tower to actually kill that dwarf again. Just as an FYI, I learned that the hard way as a kid. And that dwarf that we just fought scared me so bad that I didn't want anything to do with having to go back to fight him again. I fought him once and that was enough for me. So, that's just how I felt about it. Now these little ghost dudes will give bread, which is super helpful. Especially since we're kind of looking for some bread now. And I didn't, didn't do that. Didn't get my running start here. Some of these jumps are tricky. These little mushroom head guys also give you bread, so it's just a matter of smacking them around enough till they drop it for you. 
And then that hand up in the corner is, I think, something that increases your offensive power for a short time, but we don't really need that. These guys here are white mages. In my humble opinion, they're some of the biggest pains in the ass. Really not a big fan of them. Especially with the dagger, they take away... They, they cost you a lot of energy if they hit you. And... They take about six hits, which is brutal. But we're gonna get some nice upgrades now. All of our grinding was worth it. So we'll go see this guy. Hello, I sell tools. What would you like? I've come here to buy. Now we want this, the long sword. 100% absolute must. Now the other thing that we want to get is the studded mail. So that'll help a lot with taking damage. Cool. And the last thing that we want to buy is a pair of wing boots. So we'll get those too. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is change our weapon, change our armor as well. You can see our appearance has changed quite a bit, which is fantastic. And in our items area, you can also see that we've got our wing boots ready to go, which is really important because we're gonna need them in the next part of the game. Now we'll go back and see this guy here. And we're gonna get some more energy and magic replenished. We'll do that twice. Okay. We are on a roll. So we can chat with some of the people in this town too. We'll see the guru again. I shall give you a title. Fighter. Make sure you live up to it. We've definitely passed a couple of other ranks, like Battler, etc. We jumped right from Novice all the way up to Fighter, because we did lots of experience point getting in that last area. You need peace of mind. I will meditate with you. So there's our new password. So, if I die and decide to come back and play another time, that's the password that I'll need, but for now, we'll just continue along the way.